Number 19, how much force is exerted on one side of an 8.5 centimeter by 11 centimeter sheet of paper by the atmosphere? All right, so here is our uh, piece of paper, right? So let's try to draw this out. Drawing isn't perfect. That's why my name's Andrew and not Picasso. So here we have one side is gonna be 8.5. I'm gonna leave off the zero centimeter. And this side is gonna be 11 centimeters, okay? Now, we know that, so it, it's also asking us how much force is, is exerted by the atmosphere. Now, this actually problem depends upon uh, what, uh, what depth you are in relation to the atmosphere. Meaning, are you at sea level here, all right, when you're measuring the force? Or, or are you on top of Mount Everest? The answer will be different. So we are to assume, since it doesn't say, usually that means that we are at sea level, and we assume that the, the pressure, and we need to know this, is one atmosphere or one ATM. Now, when you talk about you know, using your formulas here for pressure, you have to have the units in terms of Pascal. And therefore, we know the equivalence of an atmosphere to Pascal. It's 1.01 times 10 to the fifth Pascals. All right. So basically, this problem is fairly straightforward, right? If we know the pressure at sea level and we know the area, obviously I didn't calculate it yet, but the area where, you know, it's a it's a rectangle, right? Now remember, though, that the units have to be in terms of meters, all right? We can easily then calculate the force by using this particular equation over here, all right? So we have pressure is equal to force over area. So to find the force, it's simply the pressure multiplied by the area, okay? So to find the force, it's going to be equal to 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth, okay, multiplied now by the area, which we're going to have in terms of meters. So this is 0 0.085 times uh, 0.11, okay, those are the values in terms of meters, and we can now calculate the force. So this is 1.01 .01 .01 times 10 to the fifth times 0 0.085 times 0 0.11, and we get about 944 944 uh, newtons. Let me make those fours a little neater. Okay, so this is the force on one side of the paper. Now, so basically I could draw like a vector, you know, straight down here basically, and that's the force pointing down. Uh, well, I'm assuming that it's, you know, uh, the, the side we're talking about is the top, by the way. So this would be 944 newtons. Now you might be saying, well, wait a minute, this, this thing's a sheet of paper. All right, 944 newtons is like, a hundred kilograms, right? That'd be like me hanging on the piece of paper, okay? I don't think the piece of paper is gonna hold up. So that's basically the second part here, right? It says, how can the paper withstand such a force? Well, it doesn't, all right? It doesn't, so here's the thing, it doesn't withstand a net force of 944 newtons. That's the key. The net force is not 944 newtons. If it was, like I said, it would be like me standing on the piece of paper. Paper's definitely gonna rip. Okay, the idea here is that the air, right, the atmosphere surrounds this piece of paper, okay? So whatever pressure the air is pushing down here is also equal to the pressure that the air is pushing up from the bottom. And therefore, that being the case, we know that if uh, one side of the paper is experiencing 944 newtons, the other side is also experiencing 944 newtons of force as well. And therefore, if we look at the sum then, right, of the forces, we know that it would be zero, okay? Because they're equal but opposite. So that's basically the answer to the other part, all right? Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.